scaphoid nonunion. Nonunion of the scaphoid can be incidental finding after re-injury to the wrist. What are the fractures at risk for nonunion of the scaphoid? Fracture with displacement more than one millimeter. Fractures that have inadequate treatment or has instability or fracture that displaced in a cast. Proximal pole fractures. Delayed immobilization more than four weeks increase the rate of nonunion. What is the natural history of scaphoid nonunion that was not treated? There is a high incidence of wrist arthritis. The early arthritis will start at 5 years and at 10 years the patient will have significant arthritis. Arthritis will develop in stages and is called snack rest. Scaphoid nonunion advanced collapse. And these are the three stages, although some books describe it as four stages. In the first stage, the arthritis between the radial steroid and the scaphoid. Stage 2, scaphocabitate arthritis in addition to stage 1. Stage 3, periscaphoid arthritis and capitulinate arthritis. So scaphoid fractures that left untreated will have carpal collapse and 100% development of degenerative arthritis. There is tendency of the fracture to gap open dorsally. Up to 35% of the patient has humpback deformity and 40% has a dizzy deformity. What is the best test to check for the non-union of the scaphoid bone? It is a CT scan along the scaphoid axis. How do you treat the non-union? You want to treat the non-union early, before 5 years. The healing rate is much better. You want to correct the deformity and restore the scaphoid length and alignment. And we will use bone graft and do rigid internal fixation. How about the approach? In the waist and the distal third, you will use a volar approach. You may want to remove the edge of the trapezium to replace the screw in the volar approach. The humpback deformity is better corrected through the volar approach. The dorsal approach is better for proximal nonunion because of direct visualization of the nonunion. It helps reduction and also bone grafting can be done through the same incision at the distal radius if necessary. Treatment of nonunion of the scaphoid. Is there an AVN? Is there a humpback deformity? Or is there arthritis? Nonunion without AVN, without humpback deformity, you will do ORIF and bone graft. It is the Rossi procedure. The patient will have minimal deformity, no collapse, no excessive humpback deformity. The union rate is over 90%. The dorsal approach can also be used for waist scaphoid fracture nonunion in addition to proximal nonunion. If the patient has a nonunion and no AVN, but there is a significant humpback deformity, there is a tendency of the fracture to open dorsally and significant number of patients will have a dizzy deformity. There is association between humpback deformity and dizzy deformity. That patient will need an opening wedge, interposition graft to restore the scaphoid length and alignment. 
The humpback deformity is best corrected from a volar approach. Nonunion is associated with AVN, but there is no humpback deformity. You will do open reduction internal fixation. If there is AVN, then you need to do vascularized bone graft. From 1 and 2, intercompartmental supraretinacular artery. It is a vascularized graft from the dorsal aspect of the distal radius. This technique can also be used in non-union of the proximal pole. If the non-union has an associated AVN and a major humpback deformity, because it is an AVN, you will use vascularized graft. And because you have a humpback deformity, you need a larger graft. So you will use vascularized bone graft from the medial femoral condyle. Use this technique if there is no arthritis, and it utilizes the descending genicular artery pedicle. Punctate bleeding of bone during surgery may indicate a good prognosis for healing of the nonunion. What if the nonunion is associated with arthritis? That's called snack rest. Stage 1 arthritis affecting the radial styloid and the distal scaphoid fragment. You will do radial styloid excision and bone graft for the nonunion. Do not excise more than 4 mm of the radial styloid. Avoid injury of the radio scaphocapitate ligament. Stage 2 arthritis of the radio scaphoid and scaphocapitate joints. Stage 3 Capitulionate arthritis. The radiolunate joint is relatively preserved. In stage 2 and 3, you can do a scaphoid excision and four corner fusion. The scaphoid excision and four corner fusion is done in younger patients. You can do proximal row carpectomy, but don't do it if the capitulunate joint is involved with arthritis. Preservation of the radioscaphocapitate ligament will prevent ulnar subluxation of the carpus. It is the primary stabilizer of the rest following proximal row carpectomy. You can do arthrodesis for pancarbal arthritis. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.